Internet of Things. What is on the horizon for us in networking? This is a really big open-ended question. And uh, Chris, I'm gonna hand this off to you to, uh, to, to get us started. Uh, I, I think the, the the biggest change is we're going to have to start memorizing some much bigger subnet masks. If you've become comfortable with slash 24, start learning some bigger ones. <laughs> um, uh, oh my God, this, I mean, you, you're right, Ethan. There's, there's so much, isn't there? I mean, where, where do you even begin? I mean, suddenly we have so many more devices just being introduced into our network, right? So where do you start? Security, privacy, you know, privacy, right? Um, are these boxes running uh, LLDP? Can they automatically find other things in the network? Do they call home and tell, you know, even if you think you've locked your network down in privacy terms, maybe you haven't, maybe maybe there's that new attack vector, right? Then of course, it, you know, we already know about the, the complete breakdown of the traditional trust untrust model, the inside outside model of security times that by a hundred. Now we've got all these extra <laughs> devices on the network. Plus we're reading about some internet of things devices that also have uh, potential for 5G inside them. So maybe there, even if you think you've locked down your network, it's calling. There, where do you begin? There, there, there's so many things to consider. And I, I think that's one of the biggest changes is that we have to, if, if we didn't already have our eye on the prize of security, times it by 10, right? Yeah, security is definitely one of the biggest issues. I agree with you, Chris. Um, and I'm thinking about different verticals like healthcare, where there's specific data that you have to segment or keep private. And can you can you promise regulatory bodies end-to-end -end encryption for data going this way and that way? And it becomes a, a big nightmare. And it's a little bit scary for me. And I know with talking to end customers, they're reluctant to make uh, certain purchases that they you know there are check boxes when they're making purchases of 700 heart heart rate monitors, you know, for the for a particular hospital, and because they have to look at those components. Um, on the network side, you know, you're right. I mean, maybe you start talking about IPv6 and uh, how, how do you manage these unknown devices that are difficult to posture and difficult and, and as far as their mobility in on, on the campus themselves. Because remember, we're talking about IoT. So it's probably, you know, a lot of these things are tiny little things that are attached to something, maybe not just an RFID tag, but, you know, some device that somebody's carrying. And um, and, and they disappear magically. So keeping track of those assets. But security is the first thing that came to my mind too, Chris, for those reasons. Yeah, see, I'm thinking about things like uh, even you know monitoring all these devices for mm -hmm. yep. uh, for, for, for for performance and troubleshooting and analytics and telemetry and all these all these things. There's uh, it's yeah, that's that's a pretty broad question. So you kind of want to narrow it down to think uh, which market should we really be thinking about for IoT? Really, you can say it's opportunities in terms of networking because there's going to be more stuff to do. Um, folks really will implement IPv6 and use it because they will have to. Mm -hmm. And um, in the security, security aspects and also privacy aspects. So some of it's a cultural change. And so when you're walking around at a conference or something, and they give you a batch that has an RFID on it. They may tell you, they may not. Do you want people to track you when you walk around the conference when you go here or there or that? So do you put in like a blocking thing so you can be silent? Um, what if you travel overseas and then, or, if you're American and you think people are looking at you to see what's going on, where, where do you, um, how do you manage privacy in, in this world? So, you know, that's ties into security. You pack your bubble boy Faraday cage and take it with you to uh, overseas. <laughs> And this may tie back into that conversation we were having with Lee earlier about these, uh, you know, analytics and NAC uh, packages that, that wireless vendors are promising to add on when you're, a lot of these IoT devices are going to hit your network wirelessly. So you want to make sure, one, you've got good device identification and two, you've got some kind of baseline on what's normal behavior for these devices and can I get an alert if they're changing that behavior. And that, that's an expensive proposition too. Realistically, we're adding these devices. They're like, oh, these things cost a nickel, no problem. Well, how, how do you, uh, you know, perform your security posturing against 8 billion devices sitting on your college campus or anything? How, you know, and it requires uh, redesign and new switching maybe and new wireless and new, and new uh, you know, new NAC servers like, like Lee was talking about. So it's, it's more than just, oh, what should we go with this? particular model. I mean, there, there's a lot of work involved and I speak to customers about this all the time because they're like, all right, we have to accommodate all these things. How do we do? Well, we can't just dump everything in this VLAN or that VLAN. We need something uh, more intelligent than that. It's, it's a big deal. It's an expensive deal. Another point I'll throw in here. Um, 
I think most of the IoT that we're dealing with is either Bluetooth or, or typically Wi-Fi, but there are some oddball, uh, what, what mainstream networkers might consider oddball radio schemes where you might be managing a gateway that's connecting you from LoRaWAN or whatever it is to your main network. Maybe another piece you have to manage because there's some low power um, IoT network out there that is using this proprietary scheme that uh, allows you to cast a very wide net over large geographic distances to be gathering data. That's a, a thing that's going to incre become increasingly common. Um, there has been some talk, although I haven't seen much evidence of this, but there's been some talk that, oh, with the explosion of IoT devices, we're going to see more IPv6 out there. Yeah, maybe, I guess, for certain places that have a very large or IoT deployment where there's many thousands, if not millions of devices that are under their care and feeding, that's not going to be most people. Um, but that is uh, something that's been raised. Uh, if you're listening to this IoT conversation and wondering why everyone's so freaking out about security, it's because all the IoT devices that are shipping, they are not, um, security is not a priority in their manufacture and they become <laughs> attack surfaces and are you know, well known that IoT devices are being used in uh, command and control networks as jumping off points to launch uh, launch attacks. Uh, they're, a, they're a vector to get your, get a foothold into a network as well. Uh, and so it's kind of become just regular, just known. This is the way you deal with IoT devices by assuming from a security standpoint, they're absolute crap. You can't manage them like you manage most of the devices on your network because they're a contained thing from the, um, the vendor. And you need to protect yourself from them accordingly. And that just, that's putting a, a demand on people. And, and as we pointed out, it's not necessarily just as simple as dump them all in a VLAN and it's good. Um, some environments, you know, I've, I've heard presentations by you know, vendors that, will, that have micro-segmentation solutions. They'll stick a physical device out in front of the, like a medical IoT device, because you can't manage that thing. It is what it is. It's got the OS that's embedded. You can't upgrade it. You can't patch it but you still need to protect the rest of the network from it and protect it from the rest of the network since it's highly vulnerable. And, and it's a very important asset to the hospital that it's in, let's say. Uh, it's something that you can't just take the attitude of, ah, if it gets hacked, I'll just, you know, throw a golden image back on it and we're back in business. No, it's not that simple for a lot of these devices. It puts much more pressure on, uh, on folks. So, you know, what's on the horizon? Again, a lot of the problems we've talked about are well known, but there's more and more of this uh, that is coming.